is the music. Hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is the man who knows what time it is. Phil, fill me in parish. There we go. Go. I meant it's time for a change. <laughs> Talking about Marvel. No, there's lots of changes on Marvel. Um, who wants to come back to the books? He's saying he misses uh, the comics world. Had some statements to make about uh, 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 the Marvel in its current. He's not not sure if I agree. No. Well, then, uh, uh, sorry, not Phil. Has Jim should have been happy since they blew up Pittsburgh? <laughs> Never. It was a very, yeah, it was a very uh, acrimonious leaving for uh, Mr. Shooter. Um, which to this day is my heart. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that was my guy growing up, and and that it was like so acrimonious amongst the creatives. It's like, man, you know, it's it's hard to. It's just like when you first find out that uh, Abbott and Castell really didn't. They didn't like it that much. And, you know, they worked together. It's like, you know, they weren't like, you know, they weren't hanging out. They weren't like the Three Stooges. You know, the Three Stooges, they were brothers and, and, and Larry Fine, and they were all like, you know, from another mother, you know, as far as they were all concerned. Um, so they they like, yeah, you know, we work together. You know, we have a good comedy routine, and then we go our separate ways. Oh my god, now I can They were good friends. Now I just see Shooter walking through that bullpen. Why I oughta? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah, that, well, that, that means why people didn't like him so much. I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, so that's that. And uh, of course, as we've discussed, Bendis is leaving Mighty Marvel. Bendis! Oh, that's okay. You know, it, He's going to his new. It's fairly positive, you know. Here's one thing I'm going to say because you know, there's all you know the whole Marvel. It just seems kind of silly to me at this moment. Um, because I, I mean, it always seemed a little silly, but it, it was like silly in a way that when it was at, like when I was a kid. And you know, Stan Lee was always a guy who 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 always raved about the distinguished competition. I remember when Batman eighty nine came out, and he was like, you know, look, this is good for us, good for the industry as a whole, and to be a success. We want Tim Burton's Batman to be the biggest film in the country because it's easier for us going forward, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so. I've never understood the, the, this fight, but it does seem like it's getting meaner lately. You know, I think. You mean the fans? Like the like fan wise? Yeah. I think fans get meaner now that we have an internet. I, I think back when our towns were, were moderated by Marvel and DC in the letters pages, back when there was like really some, there was an adult in charge of our conversations, I think things were a little more civil. Oh yeah, I mean, as, as everyone's on their on their own accord, and you can be anonymous. Yeah, people, you know, it tends to bring up yeah. the worst than a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I made a comment on uh, CBR today. Um, I wanted to make it a couple days ago, but I lost the 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 thing on my Facebook feed. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but so apparently, well, CBR is me. So I don't know. If well, you read the most recent um, Avengers with Viv being turned human by the uh, High Evolutionary. Um, was that Avengers or Champions? Uh, well, it was it was in one than the other. Okay, <laughs> so I was going to say, reading Avengers, not Champions. I know High Evolutionary was threatening it, but I don't think I saw the issue where he actually did it. Well, he did at the end of one issue, and then the next issue is her being there. So he he does. I think he did it at the end of Avengers, and then it follows back up in Champions. 
But anyway, so um, she is, she has a dusky complexion. So this is kind of big news that they've decided to make Viv a woman of color. She was this woman of color. People of color, and you get these, these very great areas of people that are but are all, but, can, but are also not the way we classify races in this country is ridiculous in general. <laughs> you know, so it's like, is she, you know, is, is she Italian? Is she Israeli? Is she Hispanic? Is she African American? There's really no way to necessarily know. She still has green eyes. She was designed to be racially ambiguous, honestly. Um, and it got, into, it got me to think about a whole other thing about the high evolutionary and, and his own human prejudices. We'll get to that in a moment. But, you know, um, basically, CBR wrote an article or put out an article about, you know, this is a big deal. Um, and, of course, all of the nerd boys, nerd fan boys, well, the, the, these, these people who are constructed racists, um, when the whole thing, oh, this is just more PC, blah, 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 blah. That I have yet to see about Blue Korg. I told, I told you, I think you're, you're the only one I think you saw it. I, I, no, I don't know who saw Thor Ragnarok. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, you're the only one to put two and two together. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that. But this, I'm saying, this is what exposes the racism of these people who want to complain about any time you do this. And this isn't even a, a, a racial switch. This is just, oh, we've decided to make her a person of color. Uh -huh. um, you know, and people are still complaining about it. Because at the end of the day, these are people who don't want to see people of color in comic books. I want to say they, it's not that, but it's like, no, it clearly is that. And what defines the fact that, that that is not, that this is what people are complaining about Blue Cork? Because not for nothing, uh, the director really made it easy for you if you are a really hardcore purist. If you say, if it wasn't the book, it must be forever in the movies and all other iterations. Uh, he just walked up to you and said, okay, I painted him blue, and I'm giving him a completely different personality. I'm a relief character, whereas none of the war bonds were comic relief. I forgot to comic relief in the war bond was Meek, and Meek actually winds up being like the most evil of all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, She's the one that actually like killed uh, the Hulk's wife. So, <laughs> um, for uh, that came out like ten years ago. But yes, yeah, spoilers. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah, but but the idea is is that you know so he gives you every reason so you can even have a real legitimate justified comic book argument to say why Blue Cork is a problem, and no one mentions it. Because at the end of the day, they don't care if you paint Korg blue. They just care if you make someone African-American or Hispanic or not, you know, not race, you know. Oh, and this is, this is my thing, and this is what has been bugging me. The most, I think, is not just aren't the... Because I know the racists were going to pick it up because they're... They're going to realize they're being told. They're not going to... But what annoys me is that nobody on the left has picked it up either and said, hey, you do realize... And... You just expose yourself to be just horrible racists about your attitudes on... Um, on comic book characters by not making Blue Korg an issue. Mm-hmm. He changed the race of Korg. You know, because we know there are orange uh, uh, Saturi, uh, Cronins. 
originally from Saturn. Um, now they're Kron from a place called Kronos, you know. I'm not quite sure the, I don't know if they're actually still from the planet Saturn because there is life in the, on the planet in the Marvel Universe. It will actually be on uh, um, uh, Saturn. It would be weird since Saturn is a gaseous planet and um, the Cronins are, are um, nature and the fact that they're stone creatures. Oh, um, Char Charlie, your connection is like horrible right now. Oh, it is. I, I'm losing every. Um, I'm losing a couple words and stuff. Yeah, yeah. What Wi-Fi am on here? Oh, that's the wrong button. One second. Uh, six. Um. Oh no! Now they can have. have Connected and secured. I don't know. Hmm. Internet connection that's bad? Uh, I don't know. Well, I, like I said, like a month or so ago, I upgraded mine. Mine's pretty quick now. You sound perfect to me. Okay. So I don't know. Of course, you don't talk very much. <laughs> <laughs> Whose fault is that? Yeah, but if, <laughs> jump in. I pause. I take breaths. <laughs> I do not have the lung capacity of the Hulk to fight, despite what Peter David uh, decided to do and say he doesn't need it anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, um, uh, yeah. Like I say, um, have you, how far are you in The Punisher? Not watched a single episode yet. Wow. Boy, I thought I was. I haven't even finished Stranger Things yet. <gasps> like the last episode of Stranger Things, I still need to watch. I got the episode seven. Yeah. I got the episode, ep episode seven. Well, good for you. I thought I, thought I was behind. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, no, man. I have not even watched this. Thing. I know basically some stuff. I know that we get Jigsaw. So good for Jigsaw. I'm excited about that. And but although again, it just emphasizes the fact that um, that the Punisher has ended his job. <laughs> You know, as we've said, the Punisher is good at his job. His job is to kill monsters, and yet he can't even kill Jigsaw. And if nothing else, but, oh, you know what I really want? I want a Gwenpool Punisher crossover. Oh, no. Gwenpool, to point out to him, you realize you're supposed to kill mobsters. Can't kill. You can't even kill Jigsaw because he's your joker. Mm -hmm. He's your counterpoint. And that's where you can never kill him. At least in the series, they apparently have to give a reason why. Uh, because of, they have a relationship. He's his best friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did the whole, uh, yeah, they did the whole uh, Clark uh, Lex Luthor <laughs> plotline there. That nice little retcon. But um, I don't understand these Netflix, like mm -hmm. all the solo series are like 13 episodes each, which I think they could cut that down to at least 10. And like Defenders was only eight when you had so many more main characters. It's I Yeah, but there was so much less story to tell in Defenders. I mean, that's and, that's fine with Defenders, but I think all these solo ones you could do it in ten. I don't know if they have some kind of monetary interest in doing thirteen every time, but I don't know. It just seems like it slows well, down yeah. a lot of these in the middle of all of them. Very intense monetary interest in, mm -hmm. in, in, in yeah, because the more episodes they put out, the more you're watching. Like I say, you know, it's it's rough when you're watching these shows and they end, you know. Mm -hmm. I was waiting. I wanted to see what happened next, you know. But you don't get it because... Yeah. And um, I think we'll see a series of unfortunate events, you know. Oh. If that does not get renewed, I am going to be so mad. Renewal of I got actually I got mad at my kids that wanted to watch a series of unfortunate events as our that was going to be our Thanksgiving tradition that we're going to start happen because halfway through the first episode, 
bored. I'm bored. It's like, this is a good show. Watch it. You're going to enjoy it. And it's like, no. Not Which, enough. of course, always happens. Not enough blood yeah. and guts for Tristan. Uh, no, you know, it has its share. I mean, I think Not Tristan enough. was... <laughs> And that was no well, this one actually you know what Tristan really wanted to watch? Hmm. So how, that's our Thanksgiving tradition is we watch Howard the Duck. Oh geez. George Lucas's Mag- Magnum Opus. Talk about a bloodbath. It's a, it's actually a good film. I was you know, because I watched it twice this week. There's, I watched it twice, uh so we watched it I watched it Wednesday night and I watched it Thursday morning. Yeah, and DVR now, so you can watch it whenever you want, forever. Yeah, but you watch uh, Powerless, too. She's not a bad film. And I mean, she goes... If you think about it for the, the time, what was that, like, 80... Was that 86 or something? I mean, are, yeah, the effects are as cheesy as... as all but no, I, just, I just mean for a super... For, well, not super... For a comic book movie of the time, it's not, you know, the worst, you know. It's it's better than the last three Superman. <laughs> oh, the Christopher Reeve. It's not the current Superman. I know. Oh, tonight you have to you have to bring. We got to bring up Justice League because Lil said she might be coming around a little on that Justice League movie. I am actually very excited about it, and I'm like kind of confused. And this is one of these things I start talking about the Marvel DC thing, where it's like, oh, wait, keep on seeing. Uh, like honestly. Democrats and Republicans have nothing on the Marvel DC. Nope. Because I keep on saying, like, you know, just like underperforms. Justice League sets new records. Like, is it underperforming or is it setting new records? It's it's like seeing the film yet. I am not going to probably get to see the film until about middle December um, because, you know, that's when spot do it. You won't tell me I have to get this move pass thing. Um, you get to see one. You get to see like one movie a day. You can like you can just use it every day. Go see another movie. Mm-hmm. One movie, you're, you're set. You know, um, and it's like oh, I, you know. And I use your movies all the time. Honestly, my biggest problem with doing that is I just don't get to see movies as much as I used to. Small things called children now. Large amounts of my time. Like when I was, at, you know, me and my wife we used to go to the movies like once a week. You know? We always mm-hmm. went to the movies. That was our, that was one of our things, you know. Back when you're when you're, because you know, dogs, you put the food in the bowl. <laughs> you know, just come back before they eat themselves to death. That's the trick with dogs, you know. Oh jeez! Because yeah. well, they're still wolves, and wolves wolves will eat as much as they can when they can because they never know when they're going to eat again. Mm-hmm. So they actually have a huge ability to store food. Humans, and of course, much like dogs, once we became domesticated, whenever we wanted to, and suddenly we got fat. Mm-hmm. But humans used to have to walk miles and miles and miles to find our been picked clean by their animals, and then would crack open the the, the brains, the brain case with a, a rock, and get out those juicy, juicy brains. <laughs> That's what many evolutionary biologists think was instrumental to the develop, development of humans walking erect. Farther. Walk further because you have to walk to where the kill was. Animals they eat all the meat, but they don't know there's a special gooey scent inside the skull. Hmm. Well, there's just fat, which gives you all kinds of calories. Fat, which is why ancient Egyptians. Remove the brain uh, from mummies because they thought the brain was useless. They basically thought it was a mucus gland. 
Huh. Because because it sticks down to your nose. Your nose is where all your boogers come out. So, well, that must be the thing that makes boogers. Why do you need such a big thing to make boogers? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ugh, let's get all those boogers out of there. Because it was just, because when they're dragging it out, it's just like little bits of fat. So it's like, just looks like more boogers to them, you know? Oh, jeez. How did we get here? I am a font of knowledge of Obscura. You're a font of something, all right. Obscura. Yeah. Anyways, um, speaking of ephemera, um, so Doomsday Clock is out. Oh, yes. Have you read it? Spoilers. Um, I, I didn't do the comic book shop this week. I probably will pick up Doomsday Clock, though, next week. If it's there. You go to the comic book shop again. Because what I, I, I'm really enjoying it because it seems like it's taking place in like the Watchmen universe. So far, yeah. I got. I'm guessing it's backing up. I think it's like. Can okay, let me pull it out? I think it was like early '90s they were showing. Um, yeah, well, I know the Robert Redford is president now. So yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, 1992, November 22nd, 1992. What I love about the Watchmen story is that it basically shows how little research Alan Moore did into uh, the world he was writing about. Um, Because he should have known that there's that continued to run for president Mm -hmm. of the um, how was it? The the 25th Amendment that limits presidential terms to two? Oh. uh, Uh, I forget which. uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing at 25th. Oh, that might have been something else. That might have been the lame duck amendment. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, but basically, you know, Nixon couldn't continue to run because there was a constitutional amendment in place after Roosevelt uh, had won election uh, numerous times. Mm-hmm. Oh, was that day clock? Yeah, doomsday clock. Okay. Did he come with I even got the little pin with the doomsday clock with the S symbol at the top of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That they're doing the whole, yeah, the whole Manhattan hates Superman. Well, I think that was the whole point they're saying now the new 52 is because Dr. Manhattan was messing with their universe. But at the do you want spoilers? Do you want spoilers? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've been reading spoilers all week, so it's not not a big deal. Well, no, at the end of this issue, Superman's having nightmares about his parents dying, and everyone's like, oh, what if Dr. Manhattan's big, one of his big alterations to the DC Universe was he killed Jonathan and Martha Kent before they were supposed to die? Yeah, well... Interesting. Because um, he, because he, because Superman, because Clark Kent yeah. wakes up in it from a nightmare, and Lois is like, "What's wrong?" And he's like, "I had a nightmare." And she's like, "I don't remember the last time you had a nightmare." And he says, "I've never. I don't think I've ever had a, had one." Mm. Oh, but uh, Rorschach's back, and you know how they did that. It's a, it's a new person. Yes, yeah, it's, it, it's a new person as Rorschach. Yeah, I did, did read that spoiler. Have they said? At first, I thought it was going to be Night Owl when I started reading the article. But they, no, they, it's uh, they haven't said who, but he was showing somebody peeled off a uh, his one of his gloves. It's a person of color. That's all. He, that's all they showed so far. Ah! You know, got to give him something, man. And then they're going to do that in next season's era where he becomes Rorschach. Oh, Hey, Neck. Oh, that's right. Monday. Not being arrow, and he hasn't been ever stepped on as being the arrow, so he's got to be someone. Hey, this make him more shocked. This is important for you. Monday and Tuesday is the crossover. Two hours each night, Monday and Tuesday. Oh, so they're doing it all in two days? Yeah, yeah. Monday's Supergirl, and then they're moving Arrow to Monday just for that week. So it's Supergirl and Arrow on Monday, and then Flash and Legends on Tuesday. Okay. Wow, man, that's condensed. Mm-hmm. I mean, still four, four hours, hours but two two nights, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like it was spread out. I, I like it's like if you do it all in two nights, it just seems like a little. I don't know. Well, they said they they want to try to they want to try to make it like a almost like a four hour movie. So I guess you know they put two yeah. hours the one night and two hours. You know, part of your wishes they did that with Inhumans, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
because I think they said it's going to flow more than even like last year. So it's like m- more like mm-hmm. one big story instead of this is this one's episode and this one's episode and this one's episode. It'll be like just two minutes at the end of Supergirl. Yeah, no, supposedly. Yeah, no, supposedly Supergirl episodes like as big a part of it as the rest of them. Meeting her evil doppelganger. Yes. Looking forward to that. The Flash um, is getting married. Ah. What marriage? <laughs> Watch this uh the over Thanksgiving. And this was this has been very annoying to me this Thanksgiving. What? I was at the grocery store. Cause usually like have still stuff for a buck. It was a buck fifty this year. Because usually they have like, you know, buy in bulk and save the money in. It was like, no, not this year. Hmm. Um so Looking for marathons, it was like no. Mar- the closest there was was the Teen Titans Go Marathon on Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Giving day marathon. Well, no, yesterday starting yesterday. I think it started yesterday. BBC America has a uh, Star Trek marathon. Okay, so I, didn't, I, 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 I don't know. Now they're on next. Year. I only get up to BBC America when when, when Doctor Who's on. <laughs> uh, I usually just watch it for either Next Generation or Voyager, but uh, I mean, that's, oh, what yeah. that's what we were talking about. I don't know if some CW exec like messed up the schedule, but like they had on Thanksgiving, they had a new episode of Arrow. If they would have had the crossover the week of Thanksgiving, it would, would have been on, on Monday and Tuesday, and then you wouldn't have to worry about Thanksgiving. You know what they should have done? What? They should have done all four episodes Thursday. Oh! crossover marathon oh they could have created a new tradition for the world watch cw thanksgiving day don't watch the lions win or lose no one knows anymore ow crossover all of their shows are going to cross over to this one big four-hour movie yeah, but I mean that would have been that. That's like worth our yeah. Time. But that crossover is like some of their biggest ratings, unless they were afraid to go against football. Because now, if they do it Monday and Tuesday, like I think a lot of the regular shows aren't on. Like I don't think the gift Football's the gift didn't stop as well. Yeah, I mean, but I think still the only thing that maybe beats football is like uh, Walking Dead and probably Game of Thrones if they were on at the same time. But yeah, I don't know. I I mean. And it's not even like it's a big game for football on Thanksgiving. It's just sort of like a thing that people watch. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, you know, like the biggest thing as a person from Detroit that was big about Thanksgiving was that it was, that was the game that the Lions won. <laughs> that we, we had a reason to watch but We don't know why anyone else was watching football on Thanksgiving. That's, that's when the Lions won. And then a couple years ago, they didn't win. And I was like, oh, okay. So I guess it's... We're not going on Thanksgiving anymore, so it, it, it kind of became like any other day. Falls on. Eh, I guess we could watch it. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> you know, if the Lions don't win. Do we care? I don't know. Maybe we do. I, I mean, I was. Football's a neat sport. It's great. It's fun. Cosplay. People love cosplay. Um, I don't it's the know. only sport where cosplay is encouraged. That's true. The co- like sports, especially football, is like the original cosplay. You know, people will exactly. find jerseys for how long? Hmm. Well, it's not just like the jerseys, but like the paint and the costumes and like yes. you know thematic things. Where you know, you know, I, I remember. Um, you know, had a guy called Darth Raider, where it was like Darth <laughs> Vader in like Oakland Raiders uh, clothes. You know, and but you know, this was very much the the thematic for football. It's very much a game that instills passions. Oh yeah, and that's good. You know, um, no, our current president does not like the passions that it instills in some others, you know? Yeah, well, you know, he is our current president, so. May Odin keep him well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh. Anyway, but, um, but yeah, so, no, I, I've always felt that, you know, 
someone should go up against football and try to throw something out there. Honestly, here's what I'll tell you. Did all eight episodes as one big long marathon. Because you know why? This is what I'm going to say. What on Thanksgiving? When you have a bad show. Yeah, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, but they want people to keep their food down, though, too. Only watching it half. You're only half watching it on Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, true. Everything, everything on in the background. And then you, you'll come and go, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, look at that. that's neat. Okay, you know, oh, what's happening? Oh, Max is doing something. Oh, that's cool. True. And honestly, you know, true. I the, think whole fa- in his- the whole family's there. You can't hear it over your deaf grandfather who, you know, with the hearing aids who has to scream everything. And yes, I'm sorry. Speaking from personal experience, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, but that's the thing. Is it, but what I'm saying is, is, like, had they saved it all? For Thanksgiving Day, Inhumans Marathon Thanksgiving Day, and because it was about that one moment to sit there and complain about episode episode, yeah, but- week you basically didn't have this entire week to complain about. Just just say over and over that's 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 and do down everything that's up. I think if they knew the negativity was going to get, they might have done something like that. But I think they were just like, oh, it might not be the greatest, but it'll be middle of the road. It'll just skate through. People, it'll get a a lukewarm reception. Finished in human chat. I have not watched the last two episodes to any degree. And this is a big Marvel fan, and yeah, I mean that thing was like, and that thing was for free on TV, and he still hasn't oh. finished it. If someone had done movies, you know, America Death too soon, Man the Deadly Dust, uh, Doctor Warriors, Strange, Doctor Strange, the greatest of them all. Oh, I would have been watching the nuts out of that. <laughs> I've been watching those 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 all day long. If you did a complete seventy days Marvel marathon, I am sent there. That stuff, just like I live tweeted the two hundredth episode of Teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, which I learned my new favorite phrase. I haven't watched it yet. I'll have to. Oh my! Once I see okay. it, I'm probably be like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Once, it's, honestly, when you in the context, it's like, I love that. I don't know. It's, oh, <laughs> oh I'll give you this. and they had animated strong. <laughs> You know, Tara Strong, but now Tara Strong is a cartoon. Wheels within wheels. Charlie, I'm lo- I'm losing your voice again. This is ugh. oh, I heard Tara Strong wheels upon wheels. Tara Strong, so they have, so they meet in the show. Mm, oh, okay. And so you have animated Tara Strong. So you have Tara Strong meets Raven. It's Tara Strong. And it's like my phone. Mind blower. That is Morty mind blower for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, anywho. Uh, I'll give I'll give you a spoiler for Justice League at the at the end of the big battle at the end Cyborg goes booyah. Oh, that makes me happy. We do get a booyah. I, I, have, I have not heard a thing I'm going to dislike about this show. Um, no, really. I don't, here's the thing: my bar is that high. It's I'll tell you, it's not it's really high. It's not. It's it's not it's not human development. To really make me say that was a bad show. It, it's it's not the highest of art, but it's not like garbage either. It's kind of, it's kind of middle of the road. 
Yeah. But you know, but that is it's, it's, DC's problem. Yeah. No. So when Marvel does an, an Age of Ultron, mm-hmm. which as I understand is kind of very middle of the road, not that good, people say. I understand what people are saying. You know, that's the exception. For DC, that's the bar that they've set for themselves. That's the problem, is that they haven't had... Was Wonder Woman, which honestly, to me, was kind of middle of the road, too, you know? It was like, oh, yeah, you know, it was good. Lack continuity with everything else they'd established about the characters and and the themes, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, but but Batman does make does make the comment to Wonder Woman in that movie. He's like, "Why aren't you? Why aren't you inspiring people like Superman? You know, he died and everyone's crying." He's like, "Meanwhile, you disappeared for a hundred years." Because Batman. Because spoilers. Ben Affleck's Batman's talking about bringing Superman back to life with the mother boxes and stuff. And Wonder Woman's like, "This is a bad idea." She's like, "Why can't you just let it go?" And he's like, "Wait." He's like, "You're telling me to let it go?" He's like, "Who told you that, Steve Trevor?" Whoa, that, that, that's like a little. I know, basically telling her. Hey, you know How does he even know that? How uh, does he even know that? That was a hundred years ago. He did his homework. Remember, he found that picture for her and everything. So I guess he put it. He's supposed to be a detective. We don't see it, but I guess he did the detective work. It's not, it's not like it's not like he had like a picture of the bedroom scene. Oh, hey. you know, no, but it's not like it's not like there's there's like. Here's a guy that here, here's a guy I work with. Here's a friend from work, and we're all sitting together in the picture. It's well, not like she's sitting there. Well, I mean, I guess you could put two times too, too, because I mean, she asked for this picture, and she was out of action for what, like a hundred years. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, but for, for all he knows, she was in the chief. True, true. But I mean, those guys went on to live at the end of that movie. Spoilers. Yeah, but they're all dead now. Yeah, but who says they didn't die from like old? Who says <laughs> yeah. they didn't die from old age? Breaking up on my end. So who knows whose internet is actually the, the bad one? <laughs> but no, I was saying. I said those guys. Could, all those other three guys could have died of old age. We don't know. Yeah, no, and 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 certainly they certainly could have. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Trevor is the only one that died in action. Wait a minute, wait, 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 Charlie. Here's your biggest fault. Fa- here's your biggest fault here in this argument. You're trying to add logic to a DC movie. <laughs> true that. True that. Um, both thing, Martha. People, um, people, people know stuff, and things just happen because. This is the problem, you know. This is this is like I say. You should never. Okay, see here's my thing. I'm not watching it. I'm not thinking any flaws in it. I'm just thinking action adventure joy joy. Why did you say that name? <laughs> you know, it's like such a. Scene. You, know, you never want to be pushed into scene. I think the scene I think has to fall. I mean, that's a big fault. You know, why did you say that name? I mean, most of the I mean, most of the free world picked up on that. So, I mean, that's a. Let me tell you this: if you didn't have that one scene, I think Batman v Superman might have been a great film. It would have been a lot better with. I think that. that a scene like that, yeah. If but a scene like that because it becomes a speed bump. Hmm. And, you know, you hit it, and then you have to slow down. And as soon as you slow down, you start looking back. Look, these are stories about people in their underwear with superpowers. This is ridiculous stuff, okay? It is ridiculous stuff. None of it is supposed to make sense. But you do something that makes you say, hey, look at how much this doesn't make sense. And suddenly you go, well, yeah, none of it makes sense. Mm-mm. And you're just hanging a lampshade on how bad the entire premise of a superhero is. Superheroes need suspension of disbelief. The only way you get suspension of disbelief is by just keep on going. You gotta keep it moving. You gotta keep it moving. And there were so many ways you could have handled that better. 
than just this rant fact. Both their moms were named Martha. Ridiculous add-on, you know? It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, so you, you couldn't have just had it be like, you, you couldn't even not have them say, you couldn't just a mom. Say my mom. Mm-hmm. He's got my yeah, mom. The whole mom thing, yeah. I mean. But no, but think about that for just one minute. You can't let him hurt my mom. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's going to do the exact same thing. It fully humanizes everyone, but doesn't hinge. I know, I know. Uh, uh-huh. if, if Superman's mom had been named Jane, uh-huh. it, that. that is what you're saying. But if you say, he, no, everyone has a mom, and Batman lost his mom, and Superman's about to lose his mom, and Batman can identify with the idea of losing your mom, suddenly it becomes a good film. And this is why or that film is often uh-huh. you know, as the old thing, you know, all for the wall, sake of a nail, we, the whole kingdom is lost. Which is what I was going to mention. I actually saw point recently. Ooh. Loved it. That was good. The animated Flashpoint movie, that was really good. That was on Thanksgiving Day. I was hoping it was going to be like, oh, it's the DC Animated Marathon. No, just that one. Why am I bothering? You know, it's like, just you know? Do, what was it? The, the one where they're in the 50s and then, you know, this one and that one. Oh. About Green Lantern's fan theory for fan theory for a movie I haven't even seen yet. Yes. So, from spoilers, in you have the big battle of the Amazons and the Olympians and a Green Lantern. Yeah, and the, the Green Lantern falls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you see in that before the ring flies off to space or whatever? What? Does it, gl- it glows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's damaged. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ring is damaged. So, think about DC curtain con- continuity. What happened to the damaged ring? How are they going to do Green Lanterns with. After uh, Deadpool ruined Hal Jordan, quote unquote. <laughs> no. What? Alan Ooh. Scott's ring. Alan Scott's ring. He found. Oh, why would this damage that didn't have all the memories? Why would this dark thing work on wood? Well, it's kind of yellow. It's kind of <laughs> yellow. <laughs> uh, I didn't work for that stuff. I don't know why. I just, you know, had a bunch of 403 arrows, you know, not found, not found, not found. But we see the ring is cracked. Oh, that, oh. The oh, that gives off. your excuse to do some uh, Justice Society stuff. Yes. But that's the idea is that, so in the next one, you, get, you don't get Hal Jordan. You get Alan oh. Scott finding the ring. The Green Lantern, red cape and all, because uh, he wants to be like Superman. Oh, uh, we need a we need another period piece like Wonder Woman, but in the forties with the Justice Society. Then you bring him back in in the current thing, or like old men. Yes. Uh, old man, did you see the? Um, oh no. Uh, the uh, <laughs> trailer recut with SpongeBob footage. No. Oh, it's perfect. It is so perfect with uh, Mermaid Man and, and, and Barnacle Boy. <laughs> oh, it's... Sick. Um, 
But I do like Batfleck. And I want to say right now, I don't think Batfleck is leaving. I think Batfleck is sticking around. I think it's important Batfleck sticks around. And here's the reason. Hmm. Cool. Batverse. Have a Nightwing. They want to have at some point. They want all these things. Mm-hmm. They may want to do a Huntress song. Who knows? You have an old Batman. We already established old Batfleck is old Batman. Mm-hmm. Continue this. And actually, I was thinking of this. Do you know who recently said she wants to play Catwoman? Um, oh, For as much as an actor saying, I want to do a job. I saw this and I forget who said it. Ming Nawa. Yes, yes. And so get this. Get Ming Ne Wah's Catwoman bringing Chloe Bennett mm. and Huntress. You get your entire Marvel infusion in the DC universe. Everybody's happy. And then you get actually Ming Ne Wah actually being able to play Chloe Bennett's mom. Which will be fun. Like her actual mom. Yeah, but, do, but we'll do the... Do, 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 yeah, but how do their contracts read? Do those Disney lawyers let them do that? Playing on the other side of the street? Like I said, I think it's I, I think that's mostly the nerds. I don't think that's nearly as much the businessmen. You know, so long as you have so as long as you make time for the for for the show that's bre- that's buttering your bread, mm-hmm. I think they're cool with it. Yeah, but I mean you know, before. I mean, especially some of the, the some of the craps that these DC movies are getting, you don't think they're like, Oh, you're gonna hurt your image and like ultimately our brand if you were like in a DC <laughs> property. <laughs> But that's why you bring in people from the Marvel properties into the DC properties. Uh, you gotta get that Marvel stink on you. That's what DC's looking uh, for right now. Um, oh, and for for fun, um, we recently learned that uh, Jude Law. Um, oh, oh, playing Captain DC. Marvel. Marvel, yeah, yeah. I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's confirmed he's Marvel because I think they said he's gonna be. He's gonna. He's he's in the Captain Marvel movie as Walter Lawson, who was that was an I, an alias that Marvel used when he was first on Earth. So yeah, no, oh, and and that's uh, yeah. I was hoping he was gonna be William Watson. Although it'd be even funnier if he if he was William Watson because he actually played Watson. Well, I'm I'm just wondering if maybe maybe he's, maybe he's just in it in the beginning because. How she originally got her powers is, you know, the crazy energy yeah, cycle you know, through him you ever, in the Carol Danvers. Know, maybe, in the, maybe in the movie version, it kills him. Um, well, still the Cree century, but if you recall, Mightiest Heroes when they introduced Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. and it was really just he was like Captain Marvel was there for two episodes. Mm-hmm. Just gets the the powers. I'm I'm hoping for you know young uh, General Ross as uh, Carol Danvers, uh, as her superior. Antagonism between Carol Danvers and and the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force, which is trying to track down these X Files mm-hmm. and Shield, trying to say, "Hey, we're the ones who handle this stuff." Mm-hmm. It's like, no, agency, you are accountable to no one. We do not trust you. And we see those Nazi scientists you guys paperclipped in. You don't see Arnim Zola right over there going, Hello, Arnim Zola, how are you? Jeez. Like, we know who that dude is, man. We got street books, you know? Mm-hmm. Someone we know, okay? <laughs> we got a lot of Nazis here that got paperclipped into you guys. We don't trust you. I'd love to see that is son to vote Ross as a good guy. Mm-hmm. Then we see J. Jonah Jameson as a good guy. Because <laughs> it like completely flips your script because you're always seeing them as that antagonist to your main character. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Charlie. Yes, I know. Okay. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut it right now because uh, we have to make room for Lilith. That's right, Capes and Lunatics, and take Capes and Lunatics in a few minutes. So stay tuned. I'll use the viewers. Don't go anywhere. All right.
Oh, wait, wait. Do we, we have to do social media and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, go ahead. We're just going to go right into the next step. Okay. Uh, hey, if you'd like to follow me on the Twitters, because I live tweeted so this week. Best show ever. D H A L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's right there in the middle. That's how you know it's quality. Way at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivitygmail.com. All right. And remember, you can get a hold of us here. Well, Super Connectivity is on Facebook, on Twitter, and you can get a hold of Capes and Lunatics, Facebook, Twitter, at Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com, and the voicemail for everything, 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. All right. Take us out, Charlie. Okay. Thank you for connecting with us once again, ladies and gentlemen. With us again. Wilson wants to play after you. Because I read an article in Slate today that he's like the new hot villain in Hollywood. Back from the box, get Fantastic Four back. Just sell it back. We'll buy it. Don't you don't need to. But you'll hear that soon. <laughs>